the cloud. All right, now we're recording. All right, so this is Toggle, um, and uh, let me just, I'm like making sure that I don't have anything private on here, like secret meeting with so-and-so, um, but I don't, it's great. Um, so you can kind of see here what, this has been really crucial to me during this work from home. Um, and I wanna make sure I'm saying that I don't, I'm not a big fan of tracking every moment of work that you do, but we are being asked to track our work. Um, and so this has been really helpful to me when I'm making the spreadsheet um, because I'll just reveal that sometimes I don't do that every day and I have to go back and fill some things in. Um, and if I just did it based on my calendar, it would take me so long. Um, so I use this toggle, um, which I usually use on my computer because usually if I'm working, I'm working on my computer. Um, but there is an app and the app is actually very nice. Um, I'll let Brown weigh in in a minute because I know he's also used the, some of the desktop features for toggle. Um, but you can kind of see how it sets up. Um, you put in, so like before this, uh, right now you can see I have my UL VLC and this is a project. Um, and project is like more, you can kind of get a sense of what I've done here, sort of larger umbrella things where you might be doing a lot of work in a particular area. Um, so UL VLC is one of my um, big projects and of course it's one that I have uh, devoted a lot of time to so it comes up a lot in my toggle. Um, but also earlier today, just before this, I was doing a bunch of stuff with the data services librarian search committee which I have under the project of service, but you can also provide descriptions. So um, if you have a lot of service commitments like I do, just having service on there isn't super helpful because I can't necessarily remember which service I was working on. Um, so it helps me to have um, the description as well. Um, and the same kind of thing for a big generic one like virtual meetings, which I had to add at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so there's just been kind of, uh, I've, it, I've been working with this for a couple of years. Um, and I really like it, um, but it has been especially crucial to me during this uh, pandemic times where I've been trying to actually kind of keep up with what I have been doing. Um, and I'll let Brown jump in now. Brown, I think you use some of the desktop functionalities that I haven't tried. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, so the first off, I Jenny was the one who introduced me to this, so I don't want to pretend like I'm any master that because everything I've learned about it has been through conversations that I've had with Jenny. Um, but some of the things that it does that um, you can do with the desktop app, which I too have running um, because I'm in a meeting. Um, let's see here is uh, I guess, can I share something? You should be able to All right, let's tell see me if, if can. you can't, I have it set up so that anybody can. Let me see if I can share this specific thing here because uh, yeah so uh, can everybody see my little toggle screen here yes right and so you can see that I have a UL VLC session here um, some of the things that you can do with the desktop app is not only will it like pop up and remind you hey do you mean to be rec uh, recording something because you know you should be doing that a lot but there's also like a timeline here where you can go in and you can right click and say start entry from this in this entry if like you've forgotten to start something and go back. Um, and you can also pick from the list. I think Jenny was showing how the list shows up on um, The web stuff, but there's also a bunch of neat little preferences and I don't know if it'll, you'll be able to see these. Let me see if I can share the entire screen. Um, so you can see this stuff. Uh, does everybody see the little preferences screen here? So this will allow you to make some changes. And one of the things, um, the Pomodoro timer is really nice if you're trying to maintain productivity, is you can turn on, so it's like 25 minutes of work and then a five minute break and things like that. Um, and there's even this uh, auto tracker where if you start something, it will assume that this is the thing you're working on so you can very quickly keep track of your time. But uh, yeah, I, I have been using it quite um, extensively over the, uh, the pandemic stuff. 
And for the, those of you who know Joe especially likes to work in things like CSV, you can export it out as CSV and then you can import it into Excel and then dump it directly into the timesheets that we've been having term in. So. Yeah, it's super nice for that. Um, I like the desktop functions, especially the one you just showed, Brown. I actually haven't played with that where it lets you like kind of slot something in. That would be really helpful for me because sometimes I realize like, oh no, I've had it running for the last three hours and I was doing five things and now I need to figure out when I started and stopped and, and all that. Um, so I'm gonna have to look into that part. Um, I started to get, I started to feel really targeted whenever um, my desktop app would come in and be like, um, shouldn't you be recording your time right now? Um, so I turned it off, um, but I should really probably turn it back on. You, the one I think I, I forgot to mention is like these little plus signs here where there's like a gap, you can just like click and you can say, you know, this is what I put in, this is what I was doing for those 56 minutes and it'll automatically add it in. So if there's- Yeah, like that would be that, awesome. Yeah, so, so thank you, Jenny. You're so welcome. Um, I will share my other app, which is not directly work related, but I did want to give it a shout out and it is called Colm. Um, and as Joe mentioned, um, Colm has some really nice commercials on, on the TV right now. Um, this is something um, that I did not use at all actually before the pandemic. Um, a couple of things about it, just to give you like some background. Um, I um, have I have pretty serious anxiety, and one of my big anxiety uh, ideations is around contagion. Um, so this has been um, really challenging. Um, not that it hasn't been challenging for everyone, um, but when this happened, I was like, "Oh no! All my greatest fears in the world have come true." Also, I'm also really scared of mice, and I had a really bad mice issue in my home earlier this year. So 2020 has been um, it's been a it's been a real roller coaster, mostly mostly lows. Um, but Calm is something that was recommended to me to help me with sleep, particularly, um, and it has been hugely helpful. Um, and like I said, this isn't directly work related, but I do think being able to sleep helps me work better, and and be better and live better. Um, so the way that it, it helps me sleep and what it was recommended to me for is that it has sleep stories. Um, and they are, um, I, I guess it's all like scientifically created where um, basically the person reading the sleep story uses specific um, almost like suggestions in terms of the specific words that they use. And it also gets like softer and slower over time. Um, and as someone who has um, a lot of anxiety related insomnia, it's actually been super helpful for me. Um, it almost always works. Um, and that was a real new situation for me to have something that really helped me with sleep. But it also has um, a lot of meditation options. Um, and it has a daily 10 minute meditation. And I'm again, sort of going back to my anxiety, I'm terrible at meditating because it's really hard for me to turn my mind off um, and make it stop thinking about stuff. Um, so um, that's been really helpful for me. I'm still still really working on it, trying to do it every day. But there are also other ones. There are walking meditations in there. Um, there's a segment called Calm Body that has some like stretches and stuff like that that you can do. Um, I, I really enjoy it. I did uh, buy like the premium version um, because um, I tested it out on the free version and this that's when I realized that the sleep stories really helped me. So it was worth it. I got a year um, subscription. It's kind of expensive, but again, what, what is sleep worth? A great deal to me. Um, so um, some of the, but it, it does have, I think that the daily calm and there are also quite a few other meditations in there um, that are freely available. So if you just download the app, you can access um, certain stuff for free. Um, but if you do pay a subscription, um, you get more content. And they have sometimes like, they have celebrities who do their sleep stories. Sometimes the most recent one was Kelly Rowland um, from Destiny's Child. 
Um, and then we also had uh, Laura Dern was on there recently doing one. There's a Matthew McConaughey one. Um, there is, uh, uh, this one did not work for me at all, um, but there is a, uh, now I'm, now I'm blanking on it. It's a tennis guy. Hold on, I'll look it up. Um, if anybody's seen Never Have I Ever, he's the guy, the narrator, the tennis narrator. Okay. John McEnroe. Thank you, John McEnroe. Yes, it is John McEnroe uh, reading you the rules of tennis. And so some of them, they have like fairy tale stories and then they have uh, sort of transportation based stories where they'll be like, we're on a train together. Here's what we're seeing. Um, and then some of them are just like boring topics. Like his is called, but seriously, the rules of tennis, I think. And then there's another one that's like explaining some sort of economics topic that also didn't work for me. Really, the fairy tales work best for me because I just deal with um, stories well, um, narrative stories. But yeah, so those are two I wanted to talk about um, that have been useful for me. Um, and yeah, that's good, Maggie. That I think that could work. I think you might like some of these sleep stories. Um, and then I'll just turn it over to whoever else wants to share. I can share. My video has been kind of wonky earlier. Um, and I'm trying to figure out if I can like connect with my phone and share my screen with the app actually on. Oh, that'd um, be really cool. I don't know yeah. if that works. Um, you're a little low for me on volume. I don't know if other people are having. Okay. Um, I can hear you. Know but it's it's like a sleep story in some ways still low <laughs> mm -mm. i heard you great when we were on google meet yeah all right how about now yes okay yeah. cool sometimes the like it automatically adjust volume setting is too low for me in zoom um so bird knit <laughs> uh, from cornell is a app that can help you identify birds so like I use it a lot when I eat lunch and like take my coffee breaks or something outside or like if I'm on a walk or if I just have my window open and there's a bird in the gutter right next to my window so I'll be curious about what bird it is um, and I'm frantically trying to log in with my phone but I don't think it's gonna work so um, on their website though they have like a live uh, stream sample I guess of what it looks like um, so when you download it and first open up the app, it just automatically starts recording your audio using your mic and it'll show you the pattern. Um, so in the live stream demo on their website, eh, um, they've got, like you can kind of see, it's got this, um, like it shows the noise actually as it's recording it, which is pretty cool. So they have a live mic set up on like one of their properties, I think, like in Cornell somewhere. Um, and it'll scan it automatically as it records or you can like pause the recording and select what sound you want to record and listen to and it'll analyze it and take a wild guess at what birds there um yeah common grackle <laughs> um so it in their live stream version they've got like a whole display and that looks completely different from the app and that can is so cute. Um, so they're looking at like probabilities that the species is what you're hearing. Um, but I like it because if someone's talking in the recording, it'll show human. <laughs> and it has like a little picture of like Leonardo da Vinci, like the Homo sapiens painting. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, but yeah, I really like it. There's a lot of cool birds around my neighborhood that I never would have guessed. Um, <laughs> of course, oh yeah. <laughs> so. That's I'm perfect. curious, Anna, have you used this app before? I know Anna is a big bird fan. I have not, but it is on my list. Cornell has great resources about birds, so it seems like a great one to check out. Yeah, and it's really cool to work, um, to use next to like eBird or iNaturalist if you record the bird sightings that you get, so I like to do that too sometimes. That's awesome. Um, I have three and okay. I, I use them all for work and um, I've shown them. Now you're kind of soft for me. What's happening? Maybe it's just No. My... No, okay, that's better. Right? Same though, same. Just... Okay, can you, can you hear me better? Yeah, I can. 
I can talk real loud. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, I'm going to share my screen because I have them already. Um, okay. So some of these um, I have shown to uh, some people before. So sorry if it's a repeat. Um, but I, I use these all for work. Um, the first one, I have a uh, sample blog post loaded um, where is if I wanted to um, share this with students, either print it out or share it as a PDF. Um, the print layout kind of sucks. Um, like the first page, um, we've got the headline and then the next thing, the image is on the next page and then it doesn't have like the fully embedded tweet, etc. Um, so I use a Zoom plugin. Uh, I cancel was blocked by the camera. Okay, um, called PDF Friendly, um, or a Chrome plugin. I said Zoom, but Chrome plugin. Um, you know, everything is Zoom related now. We all go to Zoom University, as they say. Uh, and so once you've installed it, um, there's a button, and it's also in your, uh, you know, right click or command menu. Um, and so it allows you to customize um, the, the PDF that you generate. Um, so it always has a headline, it ha puts the URL up at the top, which I like. But let's say you like don't actually want this image to show up there. Um, you can click on it and get rid of it. Um, or for example, like there's the related at the bottom. Um, the other print preview, it had like it had all of the comments. It had all of the headlines from like today, you know, like it went on for pages and pages. And so this, um, it like does some automated cleaning of the content, but then also I can like delete this and delete this and delete this and delete this and, you know, save it as a PDF. Uh, and it looks like a lot nicer um, than the kind where like there are a bunch of page breaks, um, with very little content across the page and whatever. Um, so, you know, big baby, just look at him, as it says. Uh, so I like it, PDF friendly it's called, and it's free. Um, the next one that I use a lot, I'm sure there are lots of things like this, um, but it is another Chrome plugin called Color Pick Eyedropper. Um, so if you have ever used um, any like photo editor or, um, like Photoshop or Illustrator, or anything that has a color pick function. Um, this does the same thing, but it's in your browser. Um, and I use it a lot for making slides in that I'll usually start with a, like an image or an icon or something um, at that I wanna like match the rest of the slides to the color scheme. So this is a, a report uh, that I had to give recently um, with some other people and so uh, I went to one of my favorite sites, flaticon.com, and I found this little icon of a clipboard. And then I was like, okay, well, I want everything else to look like that. So um, if I go to color picker uh, and go over there, it's going to give me the exact shade of red that this is. Um, and when I click on it, um, I can copy uh, the, uh, why can't I think of what that's called? What's the heck? Uh, it's not hex. What is it? It is? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if you heard my sister from across the room say, it is hex. <laughs> She's not even looking at what I'm looking at. <laughs> um, and, you know, and same thing. So um, you can click out of it, you can get the whatever, uh, you know. Um, and so it's nice because you don't have to like open stuff up in Photoshop, which is what I used to do before that, to get the color values. Um, and then the last one is also related to colors. And I showed this to Jenny a while ago, and so I don't know um, if, if. Uh, I get it all the time. I still yeah, use it. Yeah, I, I like it. It's also just kind of sad, like, like um, soothing. Um, so you can make an account and save color palettes, but I like almost never do that. And I just start from scratch. So um, you can start the generator and it'll give you like five random colors, theoretically, once it starts. Um, and I guess there's some kind of, oh, that's just a Slack ad. I was like, is there a Slack integration for 
coolers. So it's coolers.co. Um, and so uh, you can use the space bar thing to just generate a brand new palette. You can also look, lock a color in place. Um, and so next time, like everything else changes, but that blue. Um, and I'm not honestly sure if it's picking colors from like specific, you know, combinations around the color wheel or if it's totally random. Um, I, I think that there are some presets and stuff. But basically, when I'm like completely lacking in inspiration and I have to make some kind of slideshow or something, I'll just go in here and kind of like <laughs> fiddle around until something looks good. Uh, you know, and then you can export um, a palette. Uh, like I said, you can save them so you can have some kind of working stuff. Um, oh, you can also, uh, you know, drag them around. You can um, like color shift it in a different shade direction. Uh, so if you are really finicky with color schemes or you're bored, Sometimes, yeah, it's just kind of soothing to keep, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, playing around with colors. Um, so those are m my apps. Awesome. Thank you, Maggie. Um, I saw that Sam has Trello on the um, Happy Hour doc. Sam, you want to talk about Trello? I mean, yeah, sure. Bye. Didn't Brown do a session about, did you do a session about this for the ULVLC? So yeah, I don't feel like. No, not for the ULVLC. Okay. I know he did one for like the library instructional tech training face-to-face -face a while ago. So he has like documentation and stuff and they have a million, um, I'm sure tutorials online, but Brown showed me a lot of cool tricks. I felt like in that session that I use to this day. It's a to-do app you know, uh, basically, but it's also really good for project management because it allows for teams to be on it. We used them for the library, you know, research tutorials because there was a lot of people working on them. Like a common thing I've seen people do on project Trello boards is like, you could have a like to-do column. Oh, Maggie used it and uh, Suzanne for the uh, projects for people in the library. So, I mean, I have one that's like for the live, for my to-do list that um, Brown showed me how you can connect to Google Docs. So like if it's a conference presentation, you know, I'll like link to the conference proposal. So I like have kind of everything in the same place or I'll link to the slides or whatever. And then um, there's to-do dates on each card. So like, you know, I'll use that for things that are like coming up. Um, I also use the labels, you know, you can like label things and create your own labels. So I think I have one that's like in progress, um, haven't started yet, having issues, you know, or whatever. So that I, when I'm like looking for something to do, which I feel like never happens these days, I can go there and quickly, you know, be like, okay, these are due soon, you know, whatever. And you can move the cards around. Um, you can archive the cards when you're done. So like, I'll do that when I finish a project. So, you know, kind of go through my Trello board monthly and like, you know, I, and again, I like Trello and like, again, Brown could probably speak much more eloquently about it. But like, I like Trello because it's like, you know, it can work with how your brain works. Like, you know, like you can look at anyone's Trello board or app on their phone and, you know, it could look totally different than mine. <laughs> and that's fine. Like it, it's kind of flexible with how your project is going or how your brain works. So I use it a lot. Like I said, I have boards for projects, but then I have one that's for like my job that I have categories, basically all my job responsibilities and then the cards or different projects I have going on there. So anyway, I can show it, but I mostly use the desktop browser app, but like uh, I have it on my phone too. And when Brown did his session, he showed a cool thing of like making one for a vacation. Wasn't that you, Ruth? So like, you know, I mean, yeah, so it could be for your personal life too. Like I have a personal Trello board for my personal life, but like it's so neglected and sad. <laughs> I don't, I'm sure I haven't looked at it in so long. So lately for like my personal life or whatever, I have a piece of paper next to my desk. <laughs> and I'm just like, call the bill guy about this bill that's late, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, so that's not a good example of an app, but um, yeah, that yeah. was just work apps. I finally got a planner that works for me and it is yeah. 
it doesn't have dates in it. <laughs> Cause like, yeah, one, I just switched to an undated planner. It's changed everything. Yeah. It changed. And all it has is like to do this. <laughs> I would like, you know, y'all, I think all of y'all know I have young children. So, um, here is my like, to do the, you know, I stole it from my two year old. It's very cute, puppies. And then, like, wow. I, just I gave, that. Like, I gave like, that to your two year old and you stole it from her. Wow. You gave this to me? Yeah. <laughs> I stole it from her. <laughs> so basically, my to do list. Yeah. But you can see, like, where my two year old definitely draws in it. Those are maze to do's. Yeah, they're maze. They're, they're May art. Um, so anyway, that was my rant about apps. And then just to mention too, I didn't put it on there and people can talk about this, but probably the apps I use the most on my phone in terms of doing something quick at work are all the Google apps, right? Like if I have to quickly pull up a Google doc, you know, I have the Google doc app on my phone. I have the slides one. I have the, you know, one and you can switch between your personal and your work, you know, email, like you can just switch accounts really quick. So like I have my address book, you know, my contact list in a spreadsheet and a Google sheet. And then like, you know, so if I need to like quickly go to someone's house and I forget their address, I can like pull that up, but then switch it back to my work account. So like, that's probably the ones I use the most. I know that's not revolutionary, but like that is <laughs> real. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm like looking at my phone, seeing the apps that I use the most. Um, I use the Weather Channel app a lot. I didn't yeah, I'm not on here, but I'm seeing. Uh, oh, I have you know all my streaming stuff. Uh, I like to have my phone up like this while I like do dishes and do laundry. Um, I use this app called Messages a lot. Um, huh. I've never heard of that. Is that new? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just gonna say. Um, Sam, you said that to me once about Trello, like how you can make it work the way your brain works. Um, and that changed the way that I use it. I don't have, um, I, it does not work for me if I want to do like daily to do's. I have to write those down. So I also have like an undated planner, um, which has been really helpful for me because when I've had I always thought like, oh, I can't handle an undated planner. Oh, what will I do? Um, but actually it's really helps because you don't waste pages. Um, and because sometimes I just like don't have a lot to put on one day. Um, but I, so I do my to do's there, but um, Trello is really helpful for me for long-term projects. Um, so if there's something like that I don't want to forget, but that's not going to go on my daily to-do list, I make sure that it is on there. Um, I know Brown had a couple that he wanted to share, so I'll turn it over. And then it looks like Joe has another one, and we could also see if Lois or Anna or any other folks want to share. But Brown, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, I, I Sam was talking about you know Trello, and I I mean I love it too. I, one of the there's a plugin on Trello that I've been wanting to try that you can plug into a board and you make it into a like a habit tracker or something like have you used that sam no <laughs> but it's it's like it's almost like you know if you want to drink water every single day you kind of keep this thing this scrolling thing i haven't tried it yet, but anyway there's, there's that plug in and if anybody plays with it or whatever and you find it successful let me know please um so i have sort of four things um, but they'll be very quick. And so one of them I definitely use for work. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and talk about it. It's called distill.io. And what it is, is it's a website tracker. It tracks a website for changes and it's a, a Chrome plugin. And so what it'll do is it puts this little dropper. You can go to distill.io as a website and it's like a paid service that I've never used before. And so what I do instead is I use the Chrome plugin. And so what I've got here, this is just the Eric page on the library website. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to distill and I'm going to monitor the full page. 
And so what I'm going to say is every, I want this plugin to every say like one hour, check this website. And if anything's changed on it, do one of these notifications. And so if I save this here and I go to this page, so you'll see a little, little icon pops up here where it's actually going to the, the page and opening up and then closing it. And you'll see here, go to watch list. It has gone to this website and it checks every hour and it last checks at 4.34 PM. And you can manually update and do a bunch of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is demonstrate how it kind of behaves by editing a page here. And I'm just gonna change some text. and upload the change. And if I go back over here, of course it would check automatically in an hour, but I'm gonna click here and check it. And it checks the website, scans the page, and then it provides me a list of unread changes here. And if I click on it, oops, if I click on, where is it? Here, I can see what has changed. It highlights the text that is, that's changed. This is really, really good if you're taking a class from a professor who likes to change the online syllabus and not tell you about it. And that happened a lot this past semester is there would be changes in the syllabus. And so I would automatically, any changes to schedule, of course, and I would, uh, this would allow me to keep track of that. So that's the that was the one that I think is kind of nice work related because you can also target segments of pages. You know, if you're looking, I don't know, maybe you're buying concert tickets or something like that. And there's a, you know, it says they haven't gone online yet and you want it to just keep checking every five minutes or whatever. It can do that too. Uh, the next two sites are very similar. They are noise generation sites. Um, I find that that helps with my concentration and, you know, I have some hearing problems um, also. There's one called Noisly. Um, and Noisly, I think, is the easier one to use where it'll just kind of, you can just click on, um, I'm trying to get to one of the things. Yeah, let's just go to, let's see if it'll let me just try it. So what you can do is you like mix and match sounds and their different volumes. So um, let me see if I can play this through my speakers instead of this. And anyway, so then you can add and subtract like various noises and sounds. So like wind, rain, storm, train tracks, things like that. This one works really well. There's also a mobile app, which is very easy to use. The other one that's very similar is called uh, My, My Noise. And My Noise has a lot more like created scenes of things. So like, you know, here's a Japanese garden um, and you can mix and match with these sliders, the sounds and stuff like that. If you're a huge nerd like me, they also have like um, noises of like, barscapes and stuff like that and dungeons and things like that. So if you're running a Dungeons and Dragons game, you can have the sounds going around in the background. Anyway, I think it's kind of nice. This one also has a mobile app so you can be listening to various sounds. It also allows you to calibrate your headphones for what frequencies you hear. So if you need something to cancel out noise that's ambient noise that's happening to you. Um, and the last one, this is more of a personal thing. It's called the scullery.net. And I'll send all these links along. I have been trying to cook more at home. And when you try and find those recipes online where it's like, hey, I'd like to make mac and cheese. And then it's 3,000 words about how the grandmother brought this recipe over from the old country and all this other stuff. And you get down to the bottom and it's cheese and noodles and you wasted a lot of time. This, uh, these recipes are like, it's straightforward. It's just a checklist. But what's nice about it is you don't have to create an account. It stores the information in, in like a, a browser cookie. And so like if you're doing it on, a, on your phone or whatever, it's like you can check off the stuff as you have prepped it. But you can also automatically say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to have 24 people, 24 servings, and it automatically does the math and adjusts everything for you. And then you just check off what are the things that I've done.
So anyway, those are my contributions. Awesome. Thank you, Brown. Um, I am putting stuff in the um, Google Doc, um, but Brown, I would definitely say if you want to go in and change it based on whether or not I have accurately represented. Um, really does not like the spelling of scullery from that website. Um, Sorry, I would like to hear more from Lois about this recipe filter Google plugin. Is it like a print screen? Because one of the things too is like the recipes that give you all the ads. I'm always having to like, you know, print. I'm going to like the print screen so that it's not constantly flashing and changing the view. Like, is it like that? Um, yeah, so basically from my experience, what happens is you go to a website that has a recipe on it and it finds where it has all the information listed. Like usually they'll put it in that like box at the bottom and it just pulls that up. It's like a pop-up that comes up. Um, and I think it has an option where you can just print that part if you want to. Um, so it kind of like saves you time. It scans the website and finds the recipe part and just pulls it to the front. So yeah, it saves you time that way. And I think it's just called recipe filter if you search the plugins. Looks like maybe Brown just put it in, uh, put the extension in. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I'm definitely gonna put that on the doc. Cause I love stories, but I don't usually really care about cooking stories. I'd be like, oh, I was really tired today. And like, I wanted something comforting. Right, it, especially hey. if it's a story that's standing between me and mac and cheese, right? Yeah. All right. Anybody else want to share some some apps or websites or whatever? I can go ahead and just kind of talk about a couple things. So mine aren't, I guess, super work related. Um, in the similar vein of the Calm app is an app that I've been using recently called Wobot. Um, it's like robot, but it starts with W-O-E, like whoa. Um, and it's this really cute app that is sort of, I think it is connected to Stanford. I could be wrong, but it's um, basically you sort of like have a little conversation with it every day and it's based in sort of um, cognitive behavioral therapy and mindfulness. And so it kind of like teaches you little things about that. And the part that I really like is it has a gratitude journal um, that is really easy to do. It just asks you like three things that went well that day and it was really, it's nice because even if you're having a crappy day, it kind of makes you like put something in there. So that way you can kind of focus on something good, but it's useful. And it has like, if you need more like talking through something, you can go in there and plug that in. Um, and it's, it's cute. I like it because it's a, it's a good way to kind of stay on top of anxiety, even if you don't um, have an sort of diagnosed anxiety disorder with everything going on in the world right now, I feel like it's beneficial. And it's nice too, because it uses little um, gifts and stuff. <laughs> yes, Dottie is being a diva as usual. And then the other app that I use um, more for work than I would have guessed is Pinterest. I um, took all of my bookmarks that were sort of living in the other bookmarks and hidden and mixed up with everything and I split them out and I made a work Pinterest and then now you can go in and make subdivided folders within Pinterest so I found that I utilize the things that I had bookmarked much more often and having that visual picture connected to the link makes it easier to find too I found because it's like okay I know what I'm looking for um, and that's been helpful too. I also use that for meal planning as well as I'll go and make I have one that's like things I'm going to make this week and I put all the recipes in there and then I move them back into, you know, either things I've made or recipes I love or other ways like that. And it just makes it easy to find. And then I have the app on my phone and I can pull up the recipe while I'm trying to make dinner. But yeah, so if, if you're a visual person, Pinterest might be helpful for kind of getting stuff organized. Yeah. yeah a lot of stuff in that deep uh, other bookmarks folder. So that's a, that's a pretty good idea there. Not to bring it back to work, but Michelle Courtney is using Pinterest to display ebooks on the OER by subject guide, and it looks really good. And if people are looking for a way to kind of like 
curate content, whether on a website for your personal use or whatever. I mean, like what Lois was said, I it's like, you know, it looks really good. It's, an, it's, you know, mobile friendly. And then you just link out to it and you can see the full collection of like what Michelle is recommending of like openly available books on a subject. And so it's pretty, uh, pretty dope. I had two other not work related ones if no one else has any <laughs> or semi work related as and I use them at work. Um, the first one is mping um, with a lowercase m and then all caps ping. So it's um, from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric or Administration, one of the government no web weather websites. Um, and it's a citizen science thing. So if it's raining or sleet or icy, you can report it to this map and it'll create like a big, um, so like a lot of weather stations will draw on this map and NOAA uses it in reports and it's super cool. Um, and they have, I think, a live map that you can view if you click on view reports on that website. So you can see like where it's raining right now. Um, but I like to use it in the rain and sleet and snow, especially like when and we get into like hurricane weather. Um, so if I'm stuck in my office and I don't have a window, I can open up and ping and just kind of guess what's happening. Um, so there's that one. And then I guess I could, I'm sure it's going to be easier than showing y'all with my words. Um, okay. I don't know if you guys can see that whole window or my entire awful screen. And I'm so sorry if you can see the whole screen. Um, only seeing the browser with mping on it. With mping? Cool. Okay. Um, so here's what it looks like. The map should load in a second. <laughs> there we go. Um, so that's what it looks like. And you can see like different reports and things and they have like a little key. So that's exactly what it looks like on my phone. Um, but so that's mping, which I really like. Um, and then the other one is Radio Garden, which is, I guess, just radio.garden. Um, and that is a online map, bright blue screen, where um, you can pan around the globe and select a different radio station for different countries. And it's kind of like an international internet radio. Um, so I use it a lot to listen to like German radio during the day. Um, And it takes a while to load because it is like a 3D globe, so it's kind of annoying, but I really like being able to see what radio, like where it is physically on the map. Um, so like it already knows I'm in Greensboro. <laughs> So, and it's really cool too, because like it picks random stations. So like, I didn't even know we had a Bollywood radio in Greensboro, but I guess we do. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, those were awesome. And obviously work-related, you are the GIS and data visualization librarian, so. <laughs> right? <laughs> I did actually find Radio Garden through looking up GIS apps. So. There you um. go. Uh, all right. Anybody else want to share? Brown's got one. Yeah. If we're if we're branching out into stuff that is work adjacent and might help with productivity, um, I've got a fun website. It's called EveryNoise.com, and it is um, Spotify has used machine learning to try and group music by type and it has some of the most esoteric um, music types out there kind of grouped into little clusters um, so like let me see if i do this right here so you can see here that i have like um, if i wanted to say listen to czech hip um, hip hop there's estonian hip hop and Jewish hip hop and LGBTQ plus hip hop. And, you know, like I, I've gone in here and just like really gone deep into some stuff, but you know, here's 
um, Vancouver punk next to Danish punk. And then when you click on one of them, it'll give you a sample of it. But then if you click on this little um, double arrow, it'll take you to, um, sorry, it takes you to a section that has a, um, a bunch of the bands that fit in that group. Um, I'm trying to get to Danish punk here. And uh, anyway, so anyway, it's, it's hard to do because I'm sending audio back through the Zoom meeting. It'd probably be best for you to explore with it anyway. But if you have a Spotify account and you click on one of those tracks, it will open it up in your Spotify browser. I think I probably did a pretty bad job putting that on the doc. So I'll just let you fix it. I just put machine learning with Spotify. All right, we still technically have 10 minutes if anybody wants to share or ask questions or whatever. I'm gonna go ahead in the chat and put in the, um, nope, I was just gonna put in the assessment form, but I accidentally just put in the link for every noise, which is great, but not what I was going for. Escape room as a genre, nice. All right, so I have the assessment form in the chat if you are um, interested in filling that out. Um, this is something that is a different format than we've done before. Um, so I'm just curious to see if this um, kind of more informal kind of share and share alike um, format is interesting to folks. Um, so, Awesome. Thank you, Maggie. Um, I'll go ahead and stop recording. Maybe if I can remember. Okay, there we go.